Welcome to the Hermetic Astrology Podcast. I'm Gary Caton in Waynesville, North Carolina. And I'm here with my longtime beloved colleague, Shireen Shostak in India. Welcome back to the show, Shireen. Thanks, JC. Yeah, great to be really, back. Really good to see you always. <laughs> I think you might be setting a record here for return guests at this point. <laughs> oh. You're one of my favorite people to have back on the show. Oh, I love that. Well, I'm honored. Yeah. I love any excuse to have a Aries Scorpio dialogue with you. There you go. <laughs> Get, even though we're doing it on Moon Day, we said, oh, we want to do Mars Day. But then we said, no, this is a moon topic. Yeah. So we're going to talk about memory. And yeah, it feels like the moon, you know, is related to the past and home. And so memory seems to, um, and water, right? And there's, yeah. you know, classically in, in Greece, at least, the waters of memory, you know, that's the, one of the things that came to my mind when, when I heard about this project. Um, Nemosine, the goddess of memory. Um, <clears throat> And so, yeah, it's really interesting in terms of synchronicities, right? Because when Mercury's retrograde, especially, I especially like to watch for synchronicities. You know, some people say, you know, it's like Venus retrograde, you know, old lovers from the past show up and, like, and stuff. When Mercury's <laughs> retrograde, like um, old narratives from the past might show up and stuff like that. And so um, it's yeah. really interesting because, you know, we did a project for Mercury Retrograde not too long ago. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then during this retrograde, I had a friend who wanted to do some uh, creative work and she was like, OK, like this is serious business. So before we do anything, <laughs> before we get started, we have to do some shadow work. And I was like, OK. And I was like, well, if, if I'm going to do shadow work, I'm going to talk to my friend Shireen because she's. She's my go-to guru on shadow work. So I reached out to you and you, I was like, what, do you have any recommendations for shadow work? And you're like, yeah, Project 40. <laughs> <laughs> it's so the there ultimate you go. Perfect synchronicity. <clears throat> and Gary, realize we always connect during the Mercury retrograde. I just realized that. I mean, that, I know, right? that's our jam, Mercury. Yeah, exactly. So so how did so first of all project 40 is like um you know your your creative child it's a 40-day um journey into the unconscious trans for transformation and out personal alchemy and i mean i remember the first time you told me about it, i was just like oh my god that sounds so cool like you know 40 days being that even biblical metaphor you know of this um transformative journey <clears throat> and then and then you know you we've we've done quite a few together and you've done a whole lot and then recently you kind of rebirthed the whole thing yep so uh, might be good to hear a little bit more about that sure yeah i mean i did i completed 40 of the first round so i thought okay that I said I would only do 40 of the, you know, that was my goal to get to 40. I said, we're going to do 40 project 40s. And so then I took a break and then I couldn't think of anything that I would want to do more. <laughs> I, I thought for sure I'd top it, you know, I always like to top, try to top myself from not myself, you know, I, I like to, I always think there's something that's going to come in, but mm -hmm. there was nothing better. And I just wanted to do more of them. I just mm -hmm. thought, it's just such a perfect structure for transformation like there's, there's nothing better you know that's just so the western mind to think okay what's the latest and greatest and the newest and the right. better and to switch it off i mean and then i thought no it's a saturn thing it just wants to go deeper and just start a new round of 40 nice and i'm so good because it it's it's just even like the second round like the sec the second incarnation of it is even mm -hmm. more than the first which I didn't think it was possible but I just love it it just never gets old I mean it's the one and we always hopefully love our work you know if we're in the right field right which is very yeah modern. but um I mean and that's actually a good segue to what inspired 
this particular project 40 yes, but exactly <laughs> just yeah, so the, the the project 40 was really born out of wanting to create a, a magical alchemical structure that mirrored the venus retrograde cycle mm -hmm. i mean that was it sounded like i did that um, i did that consciously that that's actually what the project 40 gods wanted us to be and they i just figured that out later as i was doing it i just thought let me try this 40 day thing i I hear that number's got some significance. Why not? Let's just see what happens if we put an, you know, an insoluble problem, something that you're struggling with over and over, that thing that keeps reiterating in your life, that problem that you keep bringing to your therapist or keeps showing up in your relationships. And I thought, what happens if you put that on the altar, so to speak, uh -huh. and then work on it diligently, right. like we commit, like make a vow to just focus on the work around that the shadow work of course around that issue for 40 days and 40 nights and you go out into the now it's you know the desert of the soul but you yes. know just like like the mystics whether it was jesus or buddha whoever was doing the 40-day jaunt you know yep we, we make our own version now of course everything's like a virtual side but it's you know it's it's still this idea of taking time because saturn loves this when you structure time and you mention mm -hmm. and the way mercury and saturn work their alchemy the best i think is when you create something with that structure and the you know that saturn and yeah. mercury is you know you have the you have the pieces you have the details you have the elements in place so yeah you fill the structure for, right yeah yeah and writing, you know and if and to do alchemy right you need a container right because yeah. you have all these volatile things going on and there's there might be acids in there there might be this you need a strong container to put that in so that the so that it doesn't blow up or like leak out and like eat a hole in the floor or you know any kind of crazy stuff so the 40 oh, exactly. days is the container right the alembic yeah it's the alembic yeah. it's you know it's it's the 40 days but it's also the days create the structure of the alembic or the container but then the people that come together from all over the world, which it's become an international thing, which is so yeah. wonderful. Um, and it's in the time and the longevity creates the container. That's what I realized, like the reason this is so powerful and why also I didn't want to put it to rest after the 40th one is I realized like once you do something over and over again, I mean, this is why we do any kind of spiritual practice because that repetition of something creates that a very powerful container those energies that's why you know if a temple's been standing for what thousands of years you you feel it the moment you walk into that temple versus something that was just constructed it's so a week true, ago. man even if it hasn't been standing for thousands of years um the first time i was ever at a buddhist temple in fact was in west virginia so it's not certainly not thousands of years but <clears throat> at the same time and I was just out hitchhiking and there was these guys dressed in these robes. And I just wanted to ask them what that what's up with that, you know, and I and I talked to this one guy and he was telling me about the whole Theravadan tradition and everything, because I was like, OK, but why that color? You know, I was just curious. And we were just talking and he was like, if you're really that curious, you should come out to the you know, we we're, we're trying to build a new worship center and you're welcome to come. And I was like, well, I kind of <laughs> got nothing else going on. <laughs> right. yeah, well. and i get but i get in this space i mean i monkey mind man was like i mean i i i struggle with monkey mind big time and so i had never like meditation yeah like i don't get it like that's not for me blah blah, blah. and i was like but here i am i am i've accepted an invite to go to this buddhist monastery and i sit down and <clears throat> for the first time in my life I actually entered into that quiet space. And I, I think it was because I was in a space where these monks every single day were practicing that discipline. And I kind of was able, it's almost like the temples of Asclepius, right? Where you would go and the place was designed to facilitate these dreams. And this place oh, was yeah. designed to facilitate meditation, right? And I was, all of a sudden I was able to do it. I was like, oh my God. No wonder the because I was like, okay, now I get it. Like, no wonder people make all this stuff to do about meditation. So yeah, I know from yeah, personal it's, experience what it's you're the, talking about. Yeah, it's the container and it's yeah, all the energy that goes into it. And mm -hmm. and so 
it really goes to show in this time of dematerialization too that it can happen even without a physical space like this has all been happening on a an etheric space basically like there's no actual project 40 right. temple but right. the temple gets recreated and what i've noticed is anytime we start a new one and you've been witness to this the minute you step in you feel the presence of all the work that's gone on since 2010 in all the deep work that all the souls that have come together from all over the world have done in that space yeah so in a way it's kind of like being temple or yeah um, it's we do dream or a journal temple, like a Jungian yeah. temple it's like a etheric Jungian temple of doing deep unconscious soul work and um or I work with it. the unconscious I love it. Sounds one fun. of my favorite, one of my favorite temples to visit. <laughs> Me too. That's what I wanted to create. It's mine too, because I thought, you know, I, mean, I love obviously the Kali Temple where I am here too. But even within, so I'm like kind of a, it's like a temple within a temple. That's why you were asking me before we started recording, like, hey, do you want to get out of India or what's happening there? And I said, no, this is like a dream come true. Like I, I wow. landed in my home, and so because if this actually, I don't know if you ever heard the story. But in my logo, which is it's based on that very old depiction of Saturn, who is posing the moon as we record this dream. They're having a, he's watching. I should say he's 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 giving darshan to the moon right now. Mm -hmm. um, Lord. So anyway, that depiction, I think you've probably shared it many times with that old Senex figure, the old wise man Saturn. Mm -hmm. There's like the crow and there's the angels and the yes. Mercury symbol. I, or is it Venus? Venus and Saturn symbol, I think, right? I can't remember if it's Mercury. I think it's Venus and Saturn. There's like the Venus glyph and the Saturn glyph in that depiction. And I was immediately drawn to that. So when I wanted to create the, the logo for Project 40, I was in India. It was in 2015 because it had been running already for five years, but I never did it. You know, I didn't brand it or anything like that. Mm, right, right. I didn't really want to brand, but I figured it needs its like iconic image, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, artists create this image but it's got the crow and here in india many people know it probably know from the last project 40 i have my pet crow that comes to visit every day so it's really like living in you uh -huh. know <laughs> I, if i could create a project 40 physical temple where i would do the work it would be here and anytime i've done a project 40 even before i lived here in india they were always the most profound because i've got this like i said temple within a temple i've got really i mean goddess Kali is backing the, mm. the work anyway the wow. feminine form you know yeah. Kala, Kala time so it's yeah such a blessing to do I mean to be able to do it from here no doubt I hear you I, I I'm really more and more I really find myself you know just really just <laughs> rising each day and being happy about getting to my work and just being blessed the blessing of having work that I love and and uh it's like you know wow what a, what a what a great life that i've created for myself so so congrats on that so okay so how how did we get to memory where tell us the genesis of this particular well yeah that's a great question the beauty of these project 40s uh also is that uh i don't know where these ideas come from i mean i know they ultimately come from the planets but I just wait for something to hit me. I, I mean, I don't even, the thing is you can't, I mean, the gods always show you that, you know, they're laughing while you make plans, right? So I'm just living my life. And suddenly I just get, I literally will, similar to like what we're already doing in this project for, you know, like I said, think of the theme song of your life and a song will come. So I said, okay, well, what's the next project 40? I don't know. And then I just heard memoir. And that was way before I could connect it to, oh, Mercury's going to go retrograde in Gemini. So we should do a thing about it. It never works that way. It always works in reverse. Just the same way I learned about what I learned, what Project 40 was from doing it. Like, it wasn't like I had this concept and I knew it was connected to Venus retrogrades, 40 day journey, and that we're going to do a Venus thing. And that's alchemy. And it's, you know, I just, it all, it taught me what it was, you know, wow. that's the, you know so there's the, the sacred impulse that just comes through. And then you yeah. just follow it. And in the following, you find out what it's about. Yeah, that's that's a, the way this magic works, right? So yeah. that theme came in and I thought, well, that's interesting. I wonder, memoir, okay. I don't, I honestly don't even remember why or what or how, like I just, it just 
showed up one day mm -hmm. and then started to connect the dots because then I, as I had to write about it, I was like, well, why are we doing this right now? I had to think about why it would be useful for people right now. And then I started to get the hit of, oh, Mercury's retrograding in Gemini, which is the storyteller, right? which the, you know, the narrative, as we were saying, yeah. all in this very liminal bardo state precipice threshold time of being between lives. You know, that's definitely what this pandemic, I mean, even right. before the pandemic, talking like this, but the pandemic just amplified it times a thousand. So it's an opportunity to really do a review with all these retrograde planets. I mean, we've got Mercury retrograde, Saturn just went retrograde, Jupiter's about to go retrograde. So this is the, the life review phase of 2021. And mm. it's not just in your normal Mercury retrograde, it's in its own sign. It happened right during that eclipse in Gemini while Rahu or the North Node's also in Gemini, in Western anyway. And so there's really this theme of like, all right, what's what's going on with this life script? Like and what are, and we're all nostalgic too. Mars just recently moved out of Cancer. If you do Vedic astrology, he's still in Cancer. So we're in this super nostalgic time right now of like re reflecting back. And I love the idea of memory. It's such the moon, right? Like we're doing this talk on the day of the moon and our moon. I was saying on that last eclipse, it really felt, I mean, always the eclipses, especially the new moon solar eclipse has that feeling of the sun and the moon coming together and alchemy to start a new, the new moon always has that, of course, right? But the yeah. when you have the eclipse there, it's like, it feels like it's doing it on such a profound karmic level that we can't even fathom in the moment while it's happening. And oh, yeah. again, eclipse we're talking about it. It's a while it to work out, totally. Yeah. Yeah, and it's an interesting synchronicity because somehow on the last podcast that I did when I was talking about this Mercury retrograde, I came, I came, it came to me that talking about like um, the duality of mortality and mortality, and I and I just thought about the Orphic um, cosmogony where um, you know the in the Orphic cosmogony um after you die you go to the underworld because they were greeks right so you go to the underworld there's no he that's not necessarily hell by the way it's just it's the place you go there was no heaven or hell there was just one place and it's the yeah. underworld and yeah. um and then you you most people would drink from the the waters of lethe which is forgetfulness right because life is traumatic right and and it's painful and there's a lot of suffering right so they want to mm. oh let me forget all that suffering i just went through in fact the only way you'll get me to go back <laughs> is if you let me forget like numb out right um which now i guess would be like alcohol right in the yeah or version. something like that right and, yeah and then but okay. then but for the orphix the idea was no no they had a special password where the, and that would and they would say you know I am a child of the of the starry sky and the earth right I'm I have both heaven and earthiness in me and and I and I want to drink from the waters of uh, memory I want to remember because by remembering I can go back into my next life and build on what I've already done so it's kind of like that thing where you were talking about I've already done all this stuff with Project Forty why not keep building on it. It's kind of that yeah, same yeah. thing, you know, instead of numbing out, like why not mine it for the juiciness and the, and the good stuff that, um, so that's another reason why I was like, oh yeah, memory, memoir. Okay. Yeah. Definitely been, been there. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah like, and, and you know, that plate, like, you know, we always talk about with retrograde that it's the RE in mm -hmm. the re ring, like re like it's very alchemical like it's that part of the alchemy where you have to put it back together but in alchemy first you have to scatter out all the pieces you know there's that yep. phase of the El radio is that how you say Solve it, it. I never know. break apart yeah pull it apart and then you put it you remember you reconvene it you put it you rearrange it which is yes. i feel what the planets are always asking us to do absolutely is, Pull it all apart, pull your life script, especially red, being a uh, Mercury retrograde, pull your life script apart, pull the narrative, the stories you tell yourself in your mind, you know, all those things like the, 
you know, we, we have all these, we don't even realize that we're walking around with all these narratives, like, you know, I'm this way because this happened and I'm like this and this, I expect this. And, you know, I have shame and guilt about this thing, or, you know, I deserve this thing, or I don't deserve that thing. Or people always do that to me. Or why does this always happen to me? Whatever those are, maybe it's, this is a little bit negative, but maybe it's, maybe you like the script. Maybe it's like, I'm amazing and life is great, but um, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of Saturn whatever it is, you know, whichever pieces of it are working for you, that's great. But usually there's something that's still running in that unconscious script that gets revealed a during an eclipse. And especially when you have an eclipse and a Mercury retrograde happening simultaneously and scoring Neptune. Now that could be a lot of projection. What I've noticed with this eclipse, this last eclipse, oh my God, even here where I am, the projections are flying. And I, you know, when you're not in a dynamic with someone and you watch the other two people fighting, oh, it's wow. so, because you're like, well, I can, I can see that. That's your, kind of that's surreal, your, isn't it? Your, like, that, that's your thing. Oh, you think that she's doing that to you, but you wait, that's your thing. You know, but when you're in it, you're so sure the other person is doing that thing to you. You don't realize like you're just, they're, they're, they're your mirror. Yeah. So the journal ultimately becomes the new mirror where you can break the projections. You can break those Neptunian projections. And then going back over your story, the reason that's important to recollect and remember your story is because in the magical act of writing, which is Mercury, the way you hear it, the way you retell it tells you so much about how it exists for you in the present. Because a lot of people will say, I don't want to rehash something. You know, I don't want to I'm done with the past. I don't want to bring it up again. And a lot of people have resistance, but there shouldn't be any fear. I mean, you're not going to get stuck there. And the way you go and retell your story is what's important because you can't possibly retell every moment of your story in a 40 day experience, you know, right. even if you are writing a full memoir, even if you took 40 years, you still, uh, you know, probably going to miss something from your memory. Right. But it's the way of the retelling it that's important. And to see how, your conscious and unconscious work together to put the pieces back together. Now that's going to give you this wholeness that exists in the present where the past and the future actually, as Ellen Watts said, they're all, they exist now, right? They're yeah. only in the present. The illusion is that there's something that happened in the past and there's something that's going to happen in the future. But when you do that deep digging into the archives of the past from a deeply present place, then you realize okay, it's the way that I'm remembering that is revealing to me what's actually happening in the present. It's not taking me back in the past. Mm -hmm. It's just how maybe I was a little bit stuck in the past or that past still had a grip on me in a way. Or maybe there's pieces of your past that you need to go back and recollect because- Like the golden shadow, right? Like Yeah, exactly. Could be that shadow or it could be like unlived- uh, dreams or talents that weren't developed that mm -hmm. that you started you know like for instance I was thinking god you know I really wish I would have finished my latin studies well maybe I'm gonna pick up latin during this 40 days when yeah, I, I have found myself doing that a lot and especially in the morning right right as I rise um and and it wasn't I wasn't even conscious of it but I was going back over old old memories and going like, yeah, when, what if I did this instead? Or what if I did that instead? And then, and, I, and first I was like, why are you doing that? Like, stop it. Like, that's silly. Like, you, you live now. You didn't do that. You did, you know, like, and then I was like, you know, I something, something just needs, I don't know why, but something is happening that needs to happen. And I'm just going to let it go. And I'm just going to watch it. Um, and I, don't, I still don't know exactly what that's about, but yeah, there, there was something like this review process was going on and it was kind of, I don't know, on the one hand, I think it's kind of neat to go back and look and see, well, how could I have done it differently if for no other reason than it shows that you're thinking creatively, you're thinking, you're creating options. Yeah. Whereas at the time you probably didn't think you had an option or you, you know, or you, you know, or whatever. So that was interesting. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, do you think Neptune is um, associated or connected to the superego? Because I think of it as like idealism for sure. And mm. that's, the, that's the other thing that I've been struggling with lately is like, um, um, 
super ego like shoulds and and like um, the 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 constraint you know the 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 moral constraints that are tra that that society tries to put on you you know uh, yeah ego stuff right that's what that's super ego stuff right yeah absolutely um i i mean i may be misunderstanding the question with or the way you're asking about neptune's involvement but i mean just off the bat i think of saturn and jupiter having a strong correlation with right. the well because of the all the internalized shoulds and shouldn'ts and shame and do's and don'ts and yeah yeah limitations and morality is definitely a saturn jupiter thing okay. um neptune though um i understand what you're asking in terms of idealization i definitely yeah. think of neptune the idealization and the blurring of boundaries and maybe what you're tapping into is the it's almost like Neptune could be the shadow of that, you know, kind of like when you feel like you can't stand the boundaries or you don't want to deal with boundaries, you want to escape the boundaries or the limitations of the shame, you go into those. I would think Neptune's more like the waters of forgetting, you know, the, the addiction, uh, the alcohol. Uh, yeah. Like, let okay. me find a savior out. Some, let me try to find a savior outside of myself. I mean, that's unconscious Neptune. Conscious Neptune is like the mystic, the mystical longing, the merging with the divine. I mean, it's a beautiful higher octave of Venus yeah when it's correctly i mean yeah. it's lived out lived out in its highest conscious form but yeah it can definitely yeah that's what i found myself saying it's like i want to um excise all this political crap that i'm that 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 is like coming at me as like these super ego prompts and i want because and i want something higher something more divine something more you know, mm. like from the gods rather than this political, politicized stuff that just doesn't seem to be really healthy for me anyway. Well, yeah, I understand. And it, everything's so polarized these days. So it's like we probably will be craving more of like a, a Neptune energy to dissolve boundaries, dissolve differences, to dissolve um, the illusion of separation. And then Uranus has that amazing ability to reconcile the opposites like out of nowhere <laughs> suddenly <it's> like, <laughs> just boom the sudden lightning flashes i mean when i watch people go through uranus transits i'm always amazed at how suddenly like i was always like well they get the, it's it's beyond an epiphany it's like suddenly just this integration happens that could never happen in that dual state you know it's really interesting to watch that and neptune i I don't know. Neptune's a tricky one though, because it is so very tricky. Yeah. Not Neptune waters, it's so easy to get pulled into the illusion, you know, the Maya. Neptune's Maya, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We've been talking so much about that here in India. That's been like that's been the theme of all the sat songs here for the last um, I think like a good few, maybe a month even. We've been talking about Maya and I keep thinking about Neptune. Mercury Square Neptune, Maya. Yeah. Not getting trapped with Maya, but Maya, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you know, with I was just thinking that with Neptune and Pisces, you know, for a while the nodes were exactly square to that, and I yeah. think it was. I think that was. Um, there's something collect. I think that you know this whole thing about fake news and like, what do you believe and. Who's telling the truth? And no, it's a conspiracy theory. No, we really need to look at it. And it's like, oh my God, like when will we ever have any clarity on anything, man? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. I think it's everything's illusion now. I mean, like everything's filtered. You don't even really know what people look like anymore. Like everything's become so artificial. It's like everything's so it's all smoke and mirrors right now isn't it it's i i mean and then yeah like the whole like even there's like fact check sites but then people say oh those aren't real it's like you know like you do a check is this real? like saw this thing that happened like yeah but what about the bias of your fact checker right <laughs> i know and i i realize this, maybe this is all happening because god's like you know between the mask and this insane you know polarization happening on every level you know there's just constant fights going on that 
it's almost like god's like okay just shut up <laughs> yeah, put your mask seriously, man. put a mask on it and nobody's gonna nobody's gonna come to any agreement in this i don't know it's really i mean it is kali yuga so it is the dark times but it's mm -hmm. it's like you got to be so careful with what you say and what you no doubt um, about that <clears throat> What you put out there you've got to i mean even if you believe it even if you think it's real you got to be ready for a fight pretty much yeah and you know it's interesting that you mentioned that because for, for me i know for a while you know back in the day i used to um uh I, I was just naturally drawn towards like shamanic type practices and stuff when i first started getting into spirituality and i used to w use the word shamanic to describe what I do to some, and then I was realized like, even though I'm not claiming to be a shaman by saying it's shamanic, it's shaman like, I realized like, you know, that's a little too close. Like, I don't want to be trespassing. So I stopped yeah. using that word. And in fact, you know, the idea of the Kali Yuga, for instance, for you, you're living in India, you're connected to that tradition. You know, I yeah. don't really go there. I don't even really go there with the procession of the equinoxes anymore because um you know that the the mayan um cosmology and, the, and and everything and you know really plato began the the concept of the great year from the idea of conjunctions that a great year would would consist of whenever the planets return to um all together in the same sign mm. and so i've been yeah. trying to do this remembering in terms of culture like let me go back as deep as i can into the western tradition and not get not try to be eastern or not try to be um you know um indigenous just try to be like tr really deeply as far into the the tradition that i have and mm -hmm. and you know um that thus the you know i was looking at the orphic thing and all that and so i, I feel like there's this cultural remembering that's also necessary to like um to do the same thing that you were talking about we can do with ourselves to clean up the narratives mm -hmm. and remember them in a healthier way so you, does that make any sense absolutely yeah i mean like it sounds like you're talking a little bit about like cultural appropriation and even spiritual tradition appropriation. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to be really careful about that, um, and and in the process, you know, it's it's forced me to do a lot of work. I mean, I took I went back and did an academic course. I haven't taken an academic course in like my God, like 17 years or something like that. I went back and took an academic course about the history of Western esotericism and this and that, and just really trying to remember um the deep roots of where this thing that i do comes from you know yeah um and oh, absolutely and, and it's and it's and, and what what has happened from that is i've discovered some new things in the process of going back into the past i've actually discovered some new things that i think um have something to say about the future so yeah um i think we can do both i think we can do it on a personal level and maybe on a cultural level too they're always intersecting in the other level so there's like the personal the collective or cultural and then there's the divine and so what we're going to be doing is like looking at all those intersection points because that's what really i think shapes and molds a person's incarnation like what they remember because i've been thinking about this a lot since the pandemic started about that idea of like when you die and you have that kind of supposedly like in the judgment tarot card where you're doing that life review, you know, you're like, what what stands out in your life? Like if you were dying and you were supposedly you're like flashing back over your life. Right. If we even have that long, I don't know if death works like that, but I just think it's an <laughs> interesting concept that if you were. Yeah. What did you learn? On, on your deathbed, like what would really stand out to you about that incarnation? Like, what is it that you would hold on to? And what was the authentic, what were those authentic points or like those defining moments in your life? Like, what is this life about? Because we're living it, but how much are we living it consciously? Like, what are we doing? Like, what is, yeah. what are, why were we born? It's a yeah. precious gift, life, divine life. And right. we don't, 
like Amma always says, the next breath is not even in our hands. So, you know, to wake up and be grateful for your work, it's counting the blessings and being really present. Yeah. But I mean, even people say, oh, you shouldn't go into the past, you should be in the present. But all the great spiritual traditions talk about reflecting and going back in order to integrate the lessons you know to like introspect about where you've come from like you were saying it's the same i love that you use that example of like to really honor tradition like it's one thing to be, just start like chanting a bunch of mantras but it's another thing to like go and spend i mean i've been coming here for 23 years and you know embedding myself into this culture i mean i know i have many live past lives here too i'm not just like trying to rip off the culture and make money off of it or something mm -hmm. i i'm quoted i'm I'm here to give to this culture because this is what feeds my soul. And this is where I've put most, most of my life force, you know, right. since my Saturn, it's been a devotion to India and then my Western, oh. this incarnation, my Western upbringing, I guess, you know, I never really felt like that was my home. Like a lot of America, a lot of Americans, we've all kind of displaced anyway. Who knows our roots? Yeah, it's really a melting pot and all that. Um, I never did the degree in me. I'll probably find out I'm Indian, you know, I'm probably like <laughs> 90 percent. I don't even know. I, that was the doubt. Yeah. When you were talking about the life review, though, like, so why wait until we die, though? Right. Because if we can yeah. go back and do that life review now, we might be able to get a rebirth within this one life. Does that you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we can harness the same power of like remembering and distilling the, the, the core truth of where we, and that can revitalize us to live more authentically and more, well, you know, in the core of our path, so to speak, in the core of our truth. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And to use death as that great teacher, because imagine i mean in many ways i i wonder sometimes if let's say like it kind of felt like that anyway when this pandemic hit like what if we all did get wiped out but instead we didn't get wiped out nature could have just taken us down she could have just been like i want all of you all. mother nature could have just been like i'm just you're all gone like i'm just wiping you all off and getting a, mm. and have that but she was generous actually if we think about it she was pretty benevolent to just put us in our houses yeah let us for last 16 you need a time you know? out you naughty humans <laughs> yeah but, but we could still like order from amazon you know i mean i know right and and uber eats or whatever people i mean we don't have that here but you know in the u.s right but anyway i mean so she's very she's very forgiving and generous but but in a way we should probably take the lesson like i shouldn't say should but i mean you know it's worth it considering what yeah. if we die what if we, right. in, okay, yeah, we're still alive, but it was. And I like think death. we have actually, like something died, something most definitely, like we're not going to, there is no normal that to return to, you know? Yeah. First of all, okay. whatever that was, wasn't freaking normal to begin with. No, exactly. <laughs> Very freaking far from normal. And second of all, um, yeah, so why cool. would we want to go back to that? And third of all, yeah, we couldn't go back to it even if we wanted to. You oh, know? if we go well, back. Something did die. Yeah, if we try, yeah. well, we're going to just, we're going to have something much worse. I mean, I hope people wake up to that fact. Like, it's like, if the lesson wasn't learned, I mean, that's how karma works. It's like, if you don't learn the lesson, you know, first it's like a whisper, then it's a scream, and then you you get hit over the head with a two by four, <laughs> or you, you're, you know, or you're, you're off, you know, you're done game over. <laughs> mm. so. yeah. 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 But yeah, our, so I think this, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, you sure? Yeah. 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 Okay. Totally. Um, so yeah, I think, I think this, I think that, um, it's natural to want to say, okay, like let's, you know, I told my wife the other day, like, you know, when they, it, uh, when the, it's funny because the day that Jupiter went into Pisces, well, sorry, it was mm -hmm. the day after because Jupiter went into Pisces kind of late in the day, right? So then the very next day, and in fact, it was right as Jupiter hit the angle for the first time, 
in Pisces, the North Carolina government governor says, okay, like uh, COVID restrictions are lifted. I was like, yeah. that's like so totally mundane astrology 101. Jupiter is expansion, freedom from restriction, blah, blah, blah. And I, and yeah, I told my good. wife, I was like, burn the mask, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then but, I was like, and then I was yeah. like, no, wait a second, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like delusional <laughs> uh -huh. maybe maybe you want to take your time getting back and maybe you want to like so there's this process of yeah. review and well, especially, um, no, sorry. yeah right like there's this process of before you just go okay like forget that like drink from the waters of forgetfulness just forget that ever happened right and move on no, maybe you want to remember, actually. Maybe you want to really remember and get yeah. the core lesson before you move on. So true. And and let's not forget that Jupiter's about to go retrograde. Like, it's not right? like Jupiter's just... Thinking, like, he's <laughs> it not, only he's had retrograde. one month in, in Pisces when it was in direct motion. Like, we had one month. It's like, ah, now we got to go backwards. We're going it's back gonna to be Aquarius. Reversal. Yeah, I mean, we got to see what yeah. that's going to be about with the reversal and Saturn is still in Aquarius. So there's to think like, oh, we're going to all be able to have these mass gatherings. I don't know. Because, yeah, be yes, right, Saturn like. eases up restriction too. Saturn retrograde and Aquarius eases up restrictions. But Jupiter retrograde coming now, going back into Aquarius, I think it's, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, the variant is there's this delta variant going around now and i mean we see like i mean if we're all interconnected aquarian style all the countries and everything what we saw with this pandemic is that there's no islands here there's no like oh i'm on the 10th floor you're on the first floor it's not gonna affect me i'm on the 10th no if the fire's on the first floor that's also on my teaching not mine it's gonna get to the 10th floor so or the 100th floor like you know it's we've seen like it, we're all in this together so i mean not to be a bearer of bad news and i hope this isn't the case because i know there's you know, there's been a lot of, um, so I don't want to talk about vaccinations, but you know, ideally the cases are down there. Let's hope that they stay down. Um, but at the same time, eyes wide open. Yeah, this thing is spreading and look what's happening in the UK now. So that feels to me like a Jupiter. About yeah, to it's, Jupiter it's hard to believe <laughs> that we're just going to be done just like that. Like, you know, it's probably going to be, there's still a lot to work through and, um, and and whatnot and you know and but you know it was nice to have a little bit of it was nice to have one month of jupiter in its own sign and direct you know and kind of just have a little break and it's like okay back into the um remembering and really like i was it's interesting because i was going back through some of my my journals um this morning and like remembering you know like the the and i was like oh yeah like um, you know, there's some of these insights where if I just was like, yeah, you know, and just charged off and like just back into like really outward experience that could have got could have got lost, you know, so this process of going back and, and reclaiming that stuff and distilling it before moving on, I think is really healthy and, and I think it can be really positive. I think it can be like it can actually be a save you know a lifesaver in the sense of like if you charge off you know kind of um too far too fast you know you can end up just you know getting yourself into a bunch of trouble that way so so yeah i i feel like this process of memory is is it just feel felt like to me like yeah this is this is right on time this is right where i need to be right where i want to be and uh, and so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to post a link to uh, registration uh, in the video for this and, and in the show notes. Um, and I've already posted some stuff on Facebook. If you're on there, you can check that out. And I have a newsletter coming out later today. So, you know, you're wherever uh, wherever your favorite, you know, way to get information is that you'll, there'll be information about this next thing that we're doing this 40 day journey into memory um any anything else in particular you want to share about this this particular project or anything you want to um sum up 
Sure. I think the last thing maybe I would say is, you know, based on what you were just talking about, is that we're going to be going backwards, you know, like we're going to write the story backwards, just like the planets are doing right now. So instead of starting with like, okay, we're going to start with childhood. I think it's more interesting to go back, like start with 2021 and start to go backwards and see like which things really stand out. And, you know, I'm going to be giving prompts with these different um, archetypes as they kind of show up each day, because I'm going to, again, as always, it's lived out in real time. So whichever ones show up to guide us, you know, I'll just do what I can to try to invoke whichever archetype wants to come through Mm -hmm. to guide us through each year, you know, kind of going backwards, you know. Oh, and, nice. So we're literally going to go 40 years? Yeah, well, I don't want to limit people to that because I know everyone's different ages and stuff like that. So yeah. we'll, all, we'll all start with 2021, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then we start to go back. I think like what I was thinking to do is like for the first 20 days, go back like over the last 20 years. And then for the second 20, you can skip, you just go with where, because, you know, go that kind of, you need to go, kind of harder and harder to remember. Yeah. 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 Nice. But we'll see the, that's up my plan. So who knows if that's actually, <laughs> 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 well, you might be like, okay, 2021 and now 2001. And then, you know, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but it'll, it'll, it'll be fun. I'm really looking forward to this one. I mean, I really, I'm so excited. I really feel this one. I mean, yeah, it felt right on time for me too. So I'm really happy. I was really happy to hear from you. And I'm really honored that you asked me to participate. And I hope, uh, you know, and I'm really looking forward to, I mean, this is like a community. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people that I met through your project. Yeah, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing them yeah. again. And everything. It's like I P40 know. tribe, you know. <laughs> it is. You were like in one of the first ones I mean you're a veteran like you I remember back in the day when I did them from I think I was still in New York and I would yeah. just write an email it was very short it would just have like a quote and maybe a little bit of writing and some yeah and we did like time. we did blogs on like I remember I had a blog on one of those old blogging sites <laughs> yeah, was like, yes, too. Like, what was it called? blogger blogger.com or whatever yeah yeah tumblr or one of those things <laughs> tumblr yeah tumblr I had I had blogger. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It always is a lot of fun. So um, so yeah, come on out and uh, check out the links and think about coming and joining us. We're starting on the 16th, which is Wednesday. Yeah. And um, yeah, it should be it should be really um a uh, a valuable thing. And and in the end. You might even have all the notes and or excerpts of something that you could literally turn into a memoir. Right? Yes, and the, bo- the bonus surprise is that I'm having my writing mentor from New York City join us for um, like Q and A Q&A style, you know, to help people nice. ask questions about what it takes to actually get your book published. Nice, right on, excellent. Mercury is very happy about that. <laughs> Yeah, that was a, that's a nice bonus. All right. Well, I know it's getting late where you're at, so I'm going to let you go, even though I'd like to keep you here all night. <laughs> yeah, I know. We can talk and talk. It's great. Yeah. Thanks so much for being on the show, Shereen. And, uh, and thank you for holding this poor P40 temple that is just so beautiful. And I'm looking forward to it. My pleasure. Okay. Me too. Okay. Bye, everybody.